I know how some people like to say history repeats itself or history rhymes. And this is one of those stories that speak to that. And regardless of how you feel about the Ukrainian-Russian war, this is an article that speaks to history and how many gender norms are crushed. A lot of these gender norms that are imposed are manufactured, they're artificial. People say that a woman's job is this or that or women shouldn't be able to do that. But given the opportunity to do things, women come in and smash it. Okay, so this article, Ukraine's women break down gender norms in service to their country. As their country fights to repel Russia's forces, Ukrainian women are taking on roles and responsibilities previously unavailable to them, often in challenging and dangerous circumstances. Thousands of Ukrainian men left their jobs to join the military and defend their country after Russia invaded almost 16 months ago. In their absence, Ukrainian women are stepping up. Ukrainian law previously forbade women from holding these jobs deemed too dangerous. Think about the parallels and where I'm going with this. Underground mining, forging hot metals, and operating hot, heavy machinery, these are just a few jobs Ukrainian women weren't previously permitted to do. But when Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky declared martial law after Russia invaded, thereby suspending the country's existing laws, Ukrainian women went to work. Women have historically played a crucial role in workforce during wartime, taking on jobs and responsibilities traditionally held by men, as happened during both world wars. Tatiana, 38, descends from a family of coal miners dating back generations. CNN is not giving the full name of mine workers or the location of the mine due to security concerns. Her father, grandfather, and uncle all worked in the same mine. Okay, now back to this middle paragraph. Women went to work during wars. This is the type of thing that crushes gender norms and stereotypes because women simply were not able to do certain things. Now, Black women have been crushing these stereotypes forever because for the longest time, it, everywhere, we have been working many times against our own will, but we've been working and it proves that we could work. It's just that these people, here, hear the word men when I say people, are the ones that are like, no, no, you're too precious. You're too dainty. You can't do this. You can't do that. Okay, back to the article. As a child, she dreamt of following in their footsteps, thousands of feet underground, but women weren't allowed. Instead, she worked on the surface as an automatic gas starter, start operator, monitoring methane levels in the mine. Coal mining is critical to Ukraine's energy sector, providing light and heat to the country. When hundreds of miners were conscripted into the military, Tatiana's mining company asked for female volunteers to work underground. Tatiana was one of the first to raise her hand. Tatiana, who's one of more than 45 women now working underground at the coal mine in eastern Ukraine, hopes to continue working inside the mine after the war. However, she and other women are fighting an uphill battle against traditional gender norms in her country. Now, look at this picture right here of this woman. This is Maria. She has that red headband. And what does she look like to you? I will still connect all of these dots in a little bit, but I'm going to continue with this. Article. The lead engineer at the mine, Alexander, believes that once, the U once Ukraine wins the war, he believes that women will return to their places in their gendered roles in the boxes. Um, he, he says he believes women will return above ground and do jobs for women. Yet even Alexander admits that the mine could not have kept operating without women like Tatiana. So they know, they know we can do things, but they, they still just want to put women in a box. In a northern Ukrainian town, Maria Kovets is another woman working in a non-traditional role. Wearing a red bandana and red lipstick, she's almost a mirror image of World War II, uh, II's American propaganda poster, Rosie the Riveter. She spends her days in the blacksmith forge owned by her husband, um, Andriy. Her husband was conscripted into the Ukrainian armed forces and fights on the front lines. Before the war, her husband sold intricate metalwork for hundreds of dollars to clients in the U.S. and Europe. With her husband away, Kobitz, 30, says um, it has become her mission to keep the family business afloat. She says, I often cry in the forge. My husband is defending us and is forced to be far from us. 
he performs combat tasks and is, and this is very dangerous, but this work helps me to hold on and not to fall apart because women do things that are necessary. Kopitz enjoys working in the forge, but says she hopes to give, give, she hopes to give the reins back to her husband once Ukraine achieves victory. It's tiring work, but it's interesting. I would like to do it when I feel like it, not when I have to. In different ways, these women are making significant contributions to their country. There are also 60,000 women serving in Ukrainian armed forces, 5,000 of them in combat units, according to um, Yevhelia. I'm sorry, according to this person who is a member of Ukraine's parliament. Breaking gender norms is challenging, but these women are paving the way for greater equality. They hope empowering themselves and future generations. So that when my friend sent me this article, I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what happened in World War II. In any of the um, wars, when women had to go back to work or had to go to work, no, not back to work because black women have always worked, but black women had opportunities open to them that weren't yet available because many times black women were put into a specific job that they could have, domestic servitude, labor, or that kind of thing. But with the wars, it opened up different jobs. But for white women, it opened up opportunities. So let's get into a little bit more of this history. Now, I know that we are used to seeing the um, Rosie the Riveter poster where it had a white woman. But what if I told you that that poster was actually based on a black woman? Do you really think that they would be putting a black woman on a propaganda poster in the 1940s? Absolutely not. So who was Rosie the Riveter? Deconstructing the myth, voices from real women warriors in the defense of the industry. Eva Chevenert from Detroit, Michigan was interested in war work because she heard through advertising that local companies were hiring women. In 1943, one year after graduating high school, Eva was hired by DeSoto Chrysler to make skins for airplanes. In the same year, Eva married her high school sweetheart while he was in the service. For Eva, war work was a means to earning a living as well as keep busy and prevent loneliness while her husband was away. Eva not only faced the challenge of being a woman working in a historically male-dominated position, but she also fought against racism as an African-American in a partially integrated work environment. Eva experienced her first race riot, the Detroit race riot of 1943, that resulted in the death of 34 people while attending high school in Detroit. A few years later, while Eva was working as Rosie um, in Detroit, Chrysler was integrated to a point. See, Black women have been overcoming, overcoming obstacles throughout history in this country simply to be able to eat and have shelter and all of that stuff and still do it swimmingly. It's the microaggressions that have always been there and they haven't left. And when people like me talk about things, um, people talk about intersectionality and why we need to continue to have these conversations, diversity and leadership, then we, we get labeled some kind of thing. But I will continue to talk about this. Eva worked in an integrated group of workers, but she remembered a number of segregated groups worked within the factory. In terms of gender relations, Eva considered the men in the factory to be more accommodating and cooperative when they worked with female factory employees. Eva worked for Chrysler for less than a year, and she earned enough to purchase war. Now, it was after the war that the legislation and propaganda tried to push women back into the homes, back into their domestic roles. That's when legislation started happening that basically mandated um, certain things in order to qualify for like pensions and all that kind of stuff. That's what led to the 1950s that so many people like edify and put on this high pedestal. But that is something that we have to talk about in another conversation. But yes, I know that I have weaved in quite a few things, but this just goes to show that wives will go to work because wives understand that food still has to be had. So wives are still protectors and providers. And we do so because we fill in gaps. We understand how to work hard. So this is the Rosie the Riveter that we always see. But I want y'all to keep remembering that racism always plays a part in how they decide to choose um, these propaganda posters in media and all that. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about all this. Like, comment, share.